Hello everyone, welcome to Tennis Club. Today I would like to make a double prong heavy duty work slash holster belt together with you from scratch. And the idea came along because I found this belt that I made about three, four years ago when I was experimenting with different buckles. And some customers were asking about double prong belts. And now I thought it's time to do it again from scratch showing you all the materials and the steps I follow when I'm designing a new belt so you can do it yourself whenever you want using the PDF included down below in the link. It's completely free. You download it, you get your materials, follow some of our recommendations about leather selection and all, and make your own belt at your own convenience. All right, let's get to the list of items and tools you need to get this work done. Of course, you need some leather first, you need a buckle, you need some Chicago screws that I used on this design to close the buckle, leather staple to make your loop if you wanted to, leather strap cutter, a basic ruler and a marking owl, heavy hammer comes in very handy when you're working with thick leather, punch tools for your prong holes and a basic leather puncher for the belt holes. And to finish the edges, especially if you're working with vegetable tan, a beveler, a burnishing tool, and some basic sandpaper. All right, now selecting the leather for this project. My core belief in this work is good leather crafts start with good leather. And selecting the appropriate leather for the project in hand is the utmost importance. So we're making a heavy duty double prong belt and people use it to carry heavy hanging stuff on their belts like guns or some work equipment so we need to use a strong tight and thick leather for this project so thickness is one of the first things i'm going to check when i'm looking at the available options i have over here and i'm going to consider three of the uh, very thick leathers i have available at my disposal right now this one is a um, about three and a half millimeters maybe like nine ounces of chrome and veg tan combination tanning um, brown distressed leather crazy horse and i have two vegetable tan uh, shoulders available at me one is uh, from italy full wedge tan uh, a tumbled black finish distressed oily finish article and a brown option again full vegetable tan from italy it's it's a beautiful piece uh, these are also about 8 ounces, 3.2 millimeters thickness. They will do the job just fine and they smell beautiful. So I think I'm going to go with one of these options and you're free to choose as long as you're happy with the strength of the leather you're going with here. Once we've made our leather selection, now we're going to need to measure our buckle opening. Since it's our main constraint, we need to measure exactly how wide is the buckle we're choosing here so we have a 54 millimeter opening here and i usually go about two three mil millimeters less than this so my leather fits in without any hassle so i'll go about 52 millimeters width of leather strap and my entire design will revolve around that measurement so in next step when i'm working with a new design i always sketch out the ideas i have in mind to determine what my end product should look like so quickly to sketch this belt, this is the end of my belt. Um, the width is 52 millimeters. It's gonna be a double prong, so I will have two rows of holes. The buckle end of my belt will look like this. Two holes for my prongs to go through. Four holes for my four Chicago screws, securing the buckle on it, and a belt loop. I want to go 22 millimeters wide on this one because it's a wide belt. So once I am satisfied with the look of this belt, I can go into Illustrator to precisely draw and make my pattern to cut my leather accordingly. So the tedious measurement work is done. Hopefully this is going to save you some time when you're working on your project at your convenience. So all we need to do is just print this out, cut it out from paper so we have a pattern to work with. We cut out the printed paper to have our pattern to work with. And this is gonna help us to determine where we're gonna 
punch our holes, how our ends look like, and where the buckle is going to go. And we're going to adjust our strap cutter to the exact width we're working here with. And that is 52 millimeters. So 52 we found that. We tighten it. Okay, so now we got the 52 millimeter. We're going to cut our strap now. All right, we came to the most fun part. We're going to cut our strap out of this beautiful wedge stand leather. Um, this is from our friends at La Perla Azura, Italy, in Tuscany region. Um, I love their leather, especially for the smell. This is an incredible, the best leather smell I've ever experienced in my life. So I'm obsessed with their particular smell out of their traditional recipe of vegetable tanning. That's kind of a personal reason I'm going with this leather. And we already have a straight edge on this leather because I cut belt straps before this one. If you're working with a brand new shoulder or side, first thing you're gonna do is straighten your edge before you cut your strap. Now, we already have that step ready and we're gonna start cutting the strap for making our belt. All right, now the most fun part, we are cutting our strap out of this beautiful wedge tan leather. As you know, the, the beginning is the tough part. Once you get it started, all you need to do is make your strap cutter flush to the straight edge. And I clamp down my shoulder onto the table so it doesn't move as I stretch it down. And since this leather was on my shelf for a while, a few years to be exact, there are some roll marks, which is making it a little bit more difficult to keep it under control. But this leather cuts like butter. It's beautiful. It is the leather from La Parla Azura, Italy. And I love the smell of their tanning recipe. Now we have our strap cut from the leather. I choose the better end of it for the belt tip, which is this side. There is some rack marks on this end. I'm going to use it for the buckle side so it's going to be fold and come under the screws and the loop so it's going to be hidden. This end is much more natural and beautiful so it's going to be the belt tip. Now we're going to mark the tip and the buckle end, finish our edges and we're going to have a finished belt at the end. Now we need to determine the size, the length of the belt, assuming some of you are following along and making your own. So probably you need to use one of your existing belts that you use comfortably and use that as for measurement. So we're going to lay it on the strip we just cut, leave enough room at the tip so you can clear all that um, crooked ends. And this is our belt tip, we're going to start from here. We can leave it here and make a little mark on the beginning, like let's say here our belt tip is going to start. And then flat laid belt, your existing belt on it. Now your buckle should match with your existing belt buckle. And that means your pattern here needs to come right along here so your buckle can sit at this length which means that now we need to cut our belt at this point so we can finish our buckle end of the belt. We're going to round these corners for our belt tip. Now we're going to punch some holes as we did the markings. So I'm sort of eyeballing it. There's a lot of holes to punch, but it's fun. When you're working with thick wedge, then it is satisfactory. All right, let's make the prong holes with the big hole punch we have right here. They come in very handy if you have it ready. If not, you can manually open these two. Heavy hammer comes very handy here. 
Yeah, we got a big hole right there and a second one coming. Now I'm testing my buckle in the opening and it fits nice. So this is a good time to measure and cut our loop part as well. I adjusted my strap cutters to 22 millimeters. Because the length of your loop will depend on the thickness of your leather, I rather cut a long piece of loop leather here and manually measure it as I'm installing my buckle there or at least testing it out. So now this is all 22 millimeters it's long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and place it just as this will sit on the finish belt between two layers and then I'm gonna bring the other end here to give the real thickness because the finish belt that's where it's gonna go and then when I'm measuring it I basically made a mark with my nail so wherever that met the underneath part is gonna be my cutting point Okay, now it's time to bevel our edges. I pick a number four beveler because I'm working with a thick leather. If you are working a thinner leather, you might use a thinner version. It's your choice. And the roundness you're looking for. This is the fun work. After beveling the edges, we have some uneven corners here because of the hand cutting. So you might wanna sand it off and round it nice and even here. And if there's any other loose fibers that sticks out and you don't like, you can actually turn around the entire belt with this little sandpaper. Now we came to the burnishing the edges and this is completely optional. I actually really like the raw finish of this wedge tan leather. I wouldn't mind using it like this, but some people really love burnishing and I want to show you as an option uh, if you wanted to choose doing that. And you might choose different items to use here, but water works just fine, especially with uh, wedge tan. Uh, you can dampen the edges a little bit with a little sponge or fabric you like. And then you need a friction tool, which could be a manual um, wood or a little machine that I have here like this. It spins at a high rate and basically creates heat on the edges closing the open leather fibers that are sticking out. So I'm working on the loop edge first. As you see, it darkens and a bit shines because what happens is you're closing the, the fiber ends with that heat created through friction here. And this is a nice preferable look. We're gonna go do this all around the belt again. You might not do this, or you can use other agents like Carnova cream or Toconella cream, depending on your preference here. So now we're making our belt loop using the little marking pattern. I'll make a guide hole because the staples don't go through this thick of a leather by themselves. Kind of open it as much as I can beforehand. So it's easy for the staple to reach to the other side. Now we're closing our loop using these little staples. I'm using two of them since this is a fairly wide 22 millimeters, almost an inch um, wide loop. I put those two in one end and then I go around and I push these in. Be careful the sharp edges come out on the other end. You might poke your hands with it. And I use a needle nose plier to squeeze them on, on a flat and hard surface. So I basically make sure they are all in. Plying it with this nose plier. Once they're, the tips of the staples are completely in, I can squeeze them in and close them up. Now we're putting our buckle and loop 
and belt completely together we're using chicago screws these are three eighths of an inch chicago screws it might change depending on the thickness of leather you're using here so basically we put all the things in line where they're supposed to be first and then we put the caps of the chicago screws on the top and they go in so let's give it a little crease here and we're gonna put our buckle in get the plans out and now I find it easier to do the closer to the buckle end screws first so the screws look a little longer than I need but once the loop gets in between the two sets of screws on the right and left that will make up the difference here okay yeah these are a little longer than we need here but for the sake of completion we are going to call it complete so our buckle moves easily and our prongs are sitting sitting nice over here maybe a little crooked but overall our belt is complete all right we have our finished belt here heavy duty double prong italian vegetable tan leather belt for your holsters or work equipment it is actually supposed to be very heavy duty we burnish the edges um, it is made out of a 3.5 millimeter thick leather so it's fairly 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 strong and buckle is steel i would have tried it but i don't have a pant that has belt loops that wide but for the sake of testing i'm going to put it right on my belly and this is basically how your belt will look like on your pants and eventually once we do the design we never stop here we always want to test the durability and we are not scientists here to be exact we don't have that fancy equipment to test with numbers what we do is abuse the products and see how much abuse they take how durable they are so in the next video we're gonna abuse this belt really good we have some good plans to have more fun and test this belt to see how strong it is thank you very much for watching i hope you had fun with us together and hopefully you did your own belt at home at your own convenience and use it for years to come thank you for watching again and we're going to see you in the next video